What are we making here today? I am going to turn a twister mat into a musical instrument. That's twister as in the game you used to play where you get to hold very uncomfortable poses right next to the girl who loudly turned you down at the middle school dance in your church's basement. But like in a fun way. More accurately, I'm turning this twister mat into a MIDI controller, which you can use with any computer, phone, or synthesizer to make sounds. So I'm gonna cut to some footage of the thing working and then we're gonna come back here and I'll tell you how and why I made it. get out ahead of this. You're gonna watch me play Twister by myself and you might feel like you need to make fun of me. You might feel like this is really sad or this is a cry for help. Let's just all move past it. It's, it's COVID times. Everyone's doing weird stuff by themselves. Let's just move on together. I think it'll be fun. Right hand blue. Left hand yellow. Left hand yellow. Right hand red. Left foot green. Left foot green. Right hand yellow Left foot green Left hand red Left foot blue Left foot yellow Right foot red Left hand blue Right hand green Left hand blue Welcome back. So the idea for this project came from my friend Justine, who is a very talented musician and producer. We were going back and forth one day about fun, less conventional ways to make music. She threw Twister out there as an idea, and I immediately knew we had to do it. It is now several months later, but Justine, this one is for you, and I am very excited to hand this thing off when I'm done. Also, I have to shout out my friend and longtime collaborator, Greg Cantor, who makes dance music under the name Cantor. He is also an insanely good Dance Dance Revolution player, and a few years ago he invited me to work on a project in which he combined his two talents. I wrote some software to help Greg perform his music live using his DDR pads, and the results were nuts. The implementation for that project was pretty different, and I actually had nothing to do with his hardware setup, but working on this project reminded me of him, so I just wanted to say, hi, Greg. He is currently putting out new music. It sounds amazing. I will put a link in the description. Now, the build itself, how does it work? First, we're going to talk a little bit about how it doesn't work because I went down quite the rabbit hole before finding a solid solution. I desperately wanted to get this project working using capacitive touch sensing. 
I am not qualified to give a detailed explanation as to how that works, but that's okay because you are probably already familiar with it. It's the same technology that powers your smartphone's touchscreen or your laptop's trackpad. Basically, there are these special circuits that produce an electric field that is affected by the proximity of your body. These changes in the electric field can be measured and used to control whatever you want. So when you see those videos of people playing music using melon slices or beating a video game using a pomegranate as a controller, know that many, not all, but many of those projects are built around capacitive sensing. It's really flexible because you can use anything that's at least a little conductive as an input. Fruit is a great choice because it contains a bunch of water, which is conductive. So my original plan was to cover each circle on the twister mat with some adhesive copper foil, which is both very cheap and very conductive. I was going to run a small wire from each chunk of copper to one of these. And I'm done trying to get the autofocus to make this look nice in this shot. So we are going to cut over there. This is a breakout board for the MPR 121 chip. These seem to be pretty popular for capacitive touch projects, and it's easy to see why. On one side, you have a whopping 12 pins, each of which can be connected to a separate conductive input. So, for example, if I had a regulation twister mat with 24 colored circles, I could theoretically turn the entire thing into a button matrix using only two of these. The pins on the other side here are for power and for communicating with your microcontroller, Raspberry Pi, computer, etc using the ubiquitous I2C protocol. I got these boards for about a dollar a piece on AliExpress, but Adafruit also sells a very reasonably priced version that is designed to work with alligator clips. So you can swap out your touch surfaces quickly and avoid soldering if that's not something you're into. So here is my very cheap knockoff sacrificial twister mat that I started to rig up using the copper foil and some wire. Um, and I got really excited when I started to put this together because it was very easy to do and it's pretty discreet, right? Like if I put this down on the ground, it's, it's hard to tell that there's anything underneath the pad itself. But unfortunately, things took a turn when I plugged it in and tried to test it. What I haven't told you yet is that the size of the conductive object you use affects the sensitivity of the person detection in a pretty big way. And that includes the wire that runs between the conductive object and the MPR-121. I found that as I increased the surface area of the copper enough to detect my body through the mat itself and through a sock, that the wire between the copper and the MPR-121 also started detecting my body. Now, in the context of a twister game, where in an ideal scenario, there are bodies everywhere, it would be unacceptable to have sensitive wires running across the entirety of the play area, right? The sounds would just be on all the time. So I figured I could either bury the wires somehow, maybe under like a permanent rug, or alternatively, I could increase the number of MPR-121s and then make my wires shorter. Ultimately, I decided to go in an entirely different direction because even with shorter wires, the input ended up being just too unpredictable. From what I can tell, the MPR-121 tries to calibrate its sensitivity as it's running, which is awesome, but in terms of getting a consistent, reliable detection, it just didn't seem like it was going to be the right tool for this job. I ended up buying a few of these. Let's go back over there. This is a force-sensitive resistor. If you have studied electronics at any level, you likely learned that a resistor limits the electrical current that flows from one of its terminals to the other. Force-sensitive resistors are a type of variable resistor, which means that the amount of resistance it provides can change. In this case, the resistance is affected by how much force is being applied to the main target area here. We can use a tool called an analog to digital converter to rapidly and repeatedly check the resistance and get a general sense of how much force is being applied at any given moment. While I gather that these are not crazy accurate, 
they're still primarily used for detecting a range of force values, which is a little different than what I actually need for this project. I'm just interested in a binary on or off state. I don't particularly care how hard someone is pushing down, especially if I'm playing, it's just gonna detect full force all the time because I've already fallen down on the sensor. And the range on these FSRs is pretty limited. I think the ones I got can detect between zero and 15 pounds-ish. So if you are old enough to physically stand up and play this game, you are likely gonna max out the sensor just by putting a foot on it. This is clearly not a perfect match for this application, and there are still some other downsides to consider. Uh, this can only sense forces applied to this square space here. This video is not sponsored. Players are either going to have to make contact with a relatively small subsection of the colored circle, or I'm gonna have to buy a whole bunch of these. Which brings me to my next problem. Relatively speaking, these are not cheap. Even ordering from overseas, I spent about $3 each, which is not outrageous, but after I got my hopes up for the copper foil approach, kind of a bummer. All this considered, I decided to go for it anyways, using one FSR per circle on the twister mat. I figured in the context of a game, the smaller touch area might not matter that much, and worst case, I could always add more sensors later. And maybe I could find something cool to do with the additional pressure information, right? Like maybe I could change the sound if the player is pressing harder. I don't know, we'll figure that out. So I mentioned earlier that you need an analog to digital converter or ADC to use one of these with a microcontroller. Most popular microcontrollers have at least one ADC built in, but it is fairly uncommon, as far as I know, to find one with 24 individual ADC channels. So I bought a bunch of these. This chip is the MC3, this chip is the MCP, <clears throat> this chip is the MC, th this chip is the MCP3008. That was hard to say. Anyways, it's an eight channel standalone ADC that can communicate with a microcontroller using a SPI or SPI bus, which is also extremely common. So I will be using 24 FSRs, three ADCs and a microcontroller. But which microcontroller you ask? As usual for me, I'm using ESP32. This has built-in support for MIDI over Bluetooth or USB, so it can easily be used with any music making software. And I have some MIDI Bluetooth code sitting around from a previous project, which I'll put somewhere, uh, that I can use again, which I'm happy about, it saves me some time. So in summary, here's how the whole system works. A player is going to reach out, and we're gonna simulate a real twister environment here. They're going to apply a force to one of these sensors hiding under a colored circle on the twister mat. That force is going to change the amount of current flowing through this resistor into one of the channels on the ADC. The ADC will report that change to the microcontroller, the ESP32. This will be running code that looks at that change, checks if it crosses some predetermined threshold and decides that yes, there is now someone touching that particular sensor. It will then send a message to the computer, phone, or synthesizer saying, hey, play that musical note. It's the equivalent of someone putting their finger down on a digital piano key. If the player removes their hand, foot, or butt from the sensor, the ESP32 should see that change cross the threshold in the other direction, and it should tell the computer, hey, stop playing that note. Take your finger off the key. That's it, I think I've covered everything. I'm gonna go put it together now.
is all I got for this project. Thank you for sticking around. I will put links to the GitHub and Hackaday IO project pages in the description below. If you have technical questions or you want to try to build this yourself, those are definitely the best places to start. One question I do want to answer right now because I see it all the time is what is that tool you're using to make all your connections? This is a wire wrap tool. I don't know if there's a more official name for it, but it allows you to tightly wrap a thin solid wire around another thin metal thing to make an electrical connection. There are a number of situations in which this makes a great replacement for a soldering iron. I recommend you just Google around a bit to learn more. For this project, I chose it because neither the twister mat nor the force sensitive resistors were going to stand up to the heat of a soldering iron. I could have easily melted and ruined both. And while these do make surprisingly strong mechanical connections, I find that if I strategically add a little bit of electrical tape or hot glue, those wires are not going anywhere. One last thing, I would like to recommend some music. This is Give or Taker by Angemily. Justine, who I mentioned earlier in the video, did perform on and produce this, but she did not ask me to say anything about it. I am only bringing it up because it is incredible. It was one of my most played albums of the past year throughout quarantine while I was working on projects, while I was going for my morning walks. Highly recommend this album. My favorite track is Maker. Thank you again for watching. I'm enjoying making these videos. And I'd appreciate if you sent this one to someone that you played Twister with as a kid. Let me know how that goes. I'll see you next time.